I know, I know. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, so I can't wait for that. Sweatpants season. Oh, hell yeah. Women love guys in gray sweatpants. I don't know what it is, but we're just... (laughs) We're just slanging it around. <laughs> slanging it all around, those gray sweatpants. I know. Walmart can't keep them in stock. Distribution issues going on with gray sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, gray, gray sweatpants are in high demand. <laughs> we know why. <laughs> it's good luck for fig hunts, right? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott. Hey, yo. Is that his younger brother? It's going to be. Jeff, the cream will rise to the top for oh, you. Yeah. And you're listening to all of the great action figures from our good friends at Hasbro. The fully postable. Have your own WrestleMania with all your favorite figures. Wrestling figure. He told separately from LJ Podcast. And we are the Mount Rushmore of professional <laughs> wrestling. Hey, welcome to episode 353 of the Fully Puzzable Wrestling Figure Podcast. Longest running episodic wrestling figure podcast going today. (gasps) My name is Jeff and sitting alongside next to me is my real life brother, not storyline brother, Scott. Scott, say hello. Hello. Scott, what is going on, dude? Just another beautiful day. We're getting into the cold weather, which I'm uh, really a fan of. Not a huge fan of the heat. I think I've made that clear over the course of the almost seven years we've been doing this show. About to get into the cold weather. I'm digging it. Looking forward to Halloween and all the parties around it. I hope well, by the time this airs, I guess everybody would have already been to their Halloween. Adult Halloween parties anyway. So hope you all were safe. Had a great time. But uh, love this time of year, dude. We're getting into Thanksgiving. We're getting into Christmas. Absolutely love this time of year. I know. I know. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, so I can't wait for that. Sweatpants season. Oh, hell yeah. Women love guys in gray sweatpants. I don't know what it is, but we're just, <laughs> we're just slanging it around. Slanging it all around, those gray sweatpants. I know. Walmart can't keep them in stock. Distribution issues going on with gray sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, gray, gray sweatpants are in high demand. <laughs> we know why. <laughs> it's good luck for fig hunts, right? Exactly, exactly. I just got back from Colorado, dude, and... Dude, it's funny when you get into that altitude, that dry air just just dries you out. Like my lips are still cracking, even though I've been back at sea level for the past two days. <laughs> you sound like Shannon after a big night of drinking. <laughs> Dude, I I didn't have my chap check. My chap check. I didn't have that. <laughs> Your chap I check. Hate, chap check. That's what people call it, dude. I hate I chap chapstick. I hate chapstick too. I hate having that shit on my lips. Yeah, use Carmex instead, dude. It works way better. Yeah, man. I hate having anything on my lips, dude. Sucks. Well, Except, well, yeah. 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 Anyway. I pay extra for that. Well, you know, you need money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I pay extra for that and use dental dams. Gotta be safe. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If anybody would like to get any of our shirts, head on over to Pro Wrestling Tees or What a Maneuver. Dot net. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat, and the Book of Faces at Fully Opposable, Instagram Fully Opposable, WFP. You guys know where to go back and listen to any of our shows. Just head on over to Podbean, Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Please rate and review on iTunes. Please, please send a review. Even if it's a one star, we'll read it. Five star, we'll read it. Whatever. Also, send any questions, audio questions, anything else at all. Send it over to Fully Opposable, WFP at Gmail dot com scott first things first i would like to get out of the way on the show a huge huge happy huge happy birthday to the good brother himself good brother mike i I think he turned like 32 today oh my gosh i think he was 32 he's a young ass man he said 43 but man I don't believe it. No, I don't believe it. With that beard flowing, <laughs> making him look like he's 32. He said 43. I don't believe him. He's a 32-year-old stud is what he is with that beard. Yes, exactly. So, to GBM, cheers, my friend. I hope it was a good one. Actually, I texted you today. So, anyway, it, you said it was a good one so far. So, anyways. Yes, everybody go out of your way. Go wish this man a happy birthday. Very, very happy birthday to you, my friend. The great, the one and only GBM. Also, Scott, we have an omission from last week. Yeah, I kind of thought that was going to happen. Which part? The part you put in the notes. 
Oh, okay. That part. Yes. Yes. The part you're about to read. So Jack's classic. Thank you. Oh, by the way, thank you to ring skirts. He put me in my place. Jack's classic did do a giant machine, uh, wrestling figure. So we thought the Andre was the first giant machine. We were incorrect. Jack's classic did it first. I forget what series that was. That was series 26, I think. Oh, so towards the end. Yeah, when nobody was paying attention. Got it. They should have done all the machines. Well, I mean, they had the mask for Hogan. Yeah, they had the Hulk machine. They they did a giant machine. Thank you, Nate, for pointing that out. Why didn't they do an axe machine? Uh, must have been Chinese New Year. <laughs> Although this giant machine didn't have full-on like pants. It was like he was wearing the Andre singlet, the WrestleMania three Andre singlet. Oh, so they basically just did a head swap. To Nate, thank you very much, and thank you for sending over the uh, pictures that you have been sending over. Not those ones. No, 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 not those ones, but the ones of... uh... Oh, from Nate's OnlyFans? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Ring skirts feet. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, don't knock it till you see in the pics, guys. Thank you, Ring Skirts, for sending that over and putting us in our place. And also thank you for sending over the uh, pictures that you have been sending over regarding your wrestling buddies and what Jason Wolf has been doing. So, Scott, what's new in your world? Uh, have you collected anything recently? I have. I, I went on a little bit of a tear, Jeff. Oh, did you do the ripping and the tearing? Well, I didn't do any I didn't do any ripping, but I did do a little tearing through Amazon. Okay. And I had mentioned last week, somebody brought up the question, I might have been Justin Summers, that asked if we were going to go to a toy show, what would we be on the hunt for? And I happened to mention Ghostbusters and Predators. Well, I'm not able to go to the toy show on the 5th with you. The big one that that comes around twice, well, two or three times a year. So since I'm not going to be able to go to that, I decided to jump on Amazon, do a little shopping. So I purchased for myself the four Ghostbusters Hasbro figures. Nice. This would be the old look Hasbro, uh, not like the cartoon, but like the original movie Ghostbusters. I got all four of them. I picked up two sets of risers for the Detolf just to try them out. I just want to see how they work. Uh, It's almost exactly the size of the 12 by 12 shelf, which is exactly what I was looking for. So if these work well, I'll plug them on the next show that we do after I've put them up and put figures on them, or I won't suggest them at all. So we'll see how that goes. So in addition to the Ghostbusters, the Risers, I also picked up on Amazon a NECA Terminator figure. This would be Terminator from the first movie, specifically the police station scene, which if you've seen Terminator, one of the coolest movie scenes of all time. So got my Terminator figure for the movie shelf, Ghostbusters figures for the movie shelf, and was running around on eBay and some of the other retailers online like BBTS, Entertainment Earth, Hunting down the NECA Ultimate Jungle Predator. This would be the Predator from the first Predator film. Which, 87, I went and saw this in the theaters because Jesse Ventura was in it. And it was an Arnold movie that was a huge win-win. Loved it. Still love it today. It's a classic. Had to get that figure from that movie, the Predator. And scored it at Best Buy, actually. Let's hear it for Best Buy. Coming in at best price. 35 bucks out the door. Nice. Yeah, I will take it because that was the cheapest I could find. There were some loose ones on eBay and uh, I'd rather open it myself. I mean, let's be real. If it's loose, complete, you know, smoke-free home, the whole bit, okay. But man, if I could just crack it open myself, it makes a big difference. So anyway, got the Predator figure. So I think aside from maybe Back to the Future and I'm thinking of Doc and Marty, I think my movie shelf is complete in my Detolf now. Oh, you're in on the Back to the Future stuff. I am. I've really been going through kind of like which 80s movies that I really love and would want to look at the shelf and get a reminder of those those movies. And I think I'm almost there. I'm like 98%, but I might need a Marty and a Doc. I I haven't decided yet. If I decide I want them, Amazon has them. I can just jump on, pick them up. But uh, right now I'm very happy with what I've got. And I can't wait to test out those uh, those risers. And if they work out well, for those of you with Detolfs, I will throw out which ones I picked up. So we've got to do tests. We need a test if they can hold LJNs and how many yes. LJ- Could Do you have any LJNs at the house? I do in the garage, yes. So I think I've got a Cor- Corporal Kirshner and a Hillbilly Jim out there. Okay. So I can grab those and test it out. Okay. So we need to test how they handle elites. We've got to test how they handle Remcos, Galoobs. 
all that oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah, for sure. And I have all of that right now in some various state in my room, like just waiting to go in. So once I have that, I'm also looking at some figure stands because I'm worried about them falling. Right. And I think figure stands would definitely help with that. I saw RSC has some clear ones. Uh, they come in packs of 10 for like four bucks. So I'm considering some of those. NECA has the stands you can buy on Amazon. So yes, absolutely. We'll be testing figures of all sizes, makes and models. And I'll definitely let you guys know, you especially Jeff, because you're about to set up your details. Uh, I'll definitely let you guys know what's going on with those risers. But first impression, seeing what they do, I'm a big, big fan. Like I said, number one, they take up that entire 12 by 12 shelf. So once I have them in place, I'll definitely snap some pictures, let you guys know what's up with that. Nice, man. Yeah, we've got to do tests, dude. We've got to we've got to lay out everything to see what it can hold and what it can't hold. Well, for sure. Yeah. And look, this is a fun project, right? Like we're, we're building up the man cave, the man office, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's putting our toys that we love up on display. So let's do it up. Let's do it big. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 So I did forget to mention last week um, when we were in Louisiana, we drove when we went to Myrtle's plantation because we did a, a ghost tour there. I want to say it was Saturday night. We ended up driving into Mississippi because Mississippi was only 20 minutes outside of where Myrtle's plantation is. So we drove into Mississippi and there was a spot where Ed and Carissa were looking at getting tamales. Spoiler Ooh. alert, we didn't get tamales because it was cash only and none of us had cash. But it was in this little, well, I, I guess the closest thing, just so you would understand what I was looking at, Jeff, was almost like West Point's town. Okay. Just very small, quaint, but then they had an abandoned gas station. And a lot of the stores were empty and Mm -hmm. nobody was on the streets. And it became very, I don't know if you've seen the horror movie called House of Wax. No. But it became very House of Wax-esque to me. Kind of spooked me a little bit. So they had a, um, one of the stores that was still open was a little antique store. And dude, I immediately started thinking, okay, I'm right in Mississippi. Like we just kind of, we're right in between like Louisiana and Mississippi, like right on the border. What are the odds I walk into this antique store and on some random shelf, because the place was big, what if they have like Matt Mania Remco's? What if they have black card LJNs? So you're getting that collector feeling coursing through the veins. You're starting to think of all this stuff that could possibly be sitting in these detolfs or just yes. on a shelf with a little white tag hanging off the arm. I see it what says you're doing. three dollars. Yes, yes. I see what you're doing. Well done. I like so the mindset. I walk in the door and this place is gigantic. And now my mind's racing. And I'm wanting to be like looking in every single corner, every little nook and cranny of the store I want to check out. And I did, unfortunately, no wrestling figures. It was a cool spot. But again, I got those House of Wax vibes. And I'm like, we need to GTFO. Like, <laughs> let's go. Like we're leaving now. <laughs> so we bounced, we made it out safely. Uh, nobody was covered in wax. Nobody got whacked. Uh, we made it out, went to Myrtle's plantation, but yeah, it was one of those moments. Like this place is literally in the middle of nowhere. And what are the odds I'm going to walk in and find like, dude, if they had a junkyard dog sitting there for four or $5, I would have bought it just mm-hmm. to say, I bought this figure in Mississippi, but unfortunately nothing in there. Uh, It literally was all antique stuff, but no real toys to speak of. Like, I was hoping even let's come across some G.I. Joes, some He-Man, some Mask. Nothing like that, unfortunately. But cool spot. They had some neat stuff in there. Did they have any lunchboxes? No lunchboxes that I saw. There are sometimes I'm walking around and I love looking at the old school lunchboxes, the old metal ones that you would pick up back in the day. Oh, especially when you open it up and there's the thermos inside. Thermos, too. yes. And I know it's tough to come across one that's still in pristine condition because a lot of them are faded from sun damage or yes, or you know the kids that you know took them to school and the, scuffed up the sticker on the front. Well, they were metal, right? And they were painted. So you could scratch the paint off and then later on you got the plastic with the sticker on the front. Correct. So there was the original metal and then there was the one with the plastic sticker like you had just mentioned. Yeah. But still going through and looking at those old school lunchboxes, man, those were so... Going back to Justin Summers' question last week. Yeah. 
I love going to a toy show and seeing some old school lunch boxes. Now I've never bought one because none of them have resonated with me. Right. I have one. I have the Hogan, the 85 WWF lunchbox. Right. I've got that. But at the same time, if they had, I don't know, a Dukes of Hazard in a pristine condition, a Knight Rider in a pristine condition, I might jump on that. Yeah. And you know what sucks is I'm still looking for somebody that has that Kiss lunchbox at a good price, in good condition with the thermos. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, I would have gotten that. But we went to a Christian school because our parents wanted to send us to a private school. We went to a Christian school and they didn't allow anybody to have anything with Kiss on it. That's and right. That's, yeah, and that's why I never got the lunchbox because one time it was one of the Kiss albums. I want to say it was Alive 2 or it may have been Love Gun. I can't remember which one. Anyway, uh, Kiss did inserts in their albums and one of those albums came with temporary tattoos. Mm-hmm. And I put a Gene Simmons like on my forearm or wrist or something and I went to school and they like took me in the bathroom and washed it off. <laughs> and like I think they said something to mom like don't bring him back to school with those tattoos on him <laughs> yeah, they got hella mad dude and so a lunchbox was completely out of the question so that's why I never got the kiss lunchbox did you tell the teachers hey st- stop doing that Satan get out of here <laughs> <laughs> the power of Satan compels you <laughs> they took you to the bathroom and they splashed you with holy water yeah <laughs> throwing holy water on me <laughs> oh, I'm, nice. I'm saying they're smoking like stop it Nice. Scott, we do have a little bit of news. What do you say we jump into it? Let's talk about it. Oh, you going to learn today. Scott, in the news, Asylum All-Stars Road Warriors were shown off. They are the officially with the shoulder pads. They look like the 88 look. All of Series 1 will be announced soon. So if you can, follow them on Facebook, Asylum, All-Star, Road Warriors. Just do a search for them. You'll be able to find them. 100% in on those, especially at the price point, dude. $25 is extremely reasonable, and they look fantastic. Like you said, that's definitely the 88 look, and I'm 100% in on those. And the packaging actually looks pretty cool, too. So win-win. I'm going to be 100% honest. The packaging looks cool, but it wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah, I'm taking them out anyway. Don't care. Yeah, I, I'm buying them anyway, so never <laughs> screw the packaging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but if you wanted to split, I thought the packaging was cool. That, But again, you know, it's all preference, but I have a, Road War- a dedicated Road Warriors detail shelf, and those will definitely be finding a home on there. Hassle Toys. They announced Diana Hart. She will have her SummerSlam 92 look. The renderings were shown on... You can see those on Wrestling Figure Database. I will also post that to our Twitter when we upload the show. Interesting choice there with Diana Hart. Well, you know, ultimately she does fit the Hasbro era. Technicality, yes. And look, a lot of people's favorite match, especially Bret Hart fans, especially Davy Boy Smith fans, favorite match is that SummerSlam 92 main event. Diana Hart was a huge part of that. And there are people that want to display Davey and Brett and Diana Hart Smith. So, you know, for those type of collectors, that's fantastic. Great for them. She does fit the Hasbro era. So kudos. Great, great choice. Kind of off the wall. Like, I don't think a lot of people expected Diana Hart Smith to get a figure, but hey, that's pretty cool. Is Brett Hart Mr. SummerSlam? Ooh. So let's think about it real, real fast. He had one of the all-time classic matches against Perfect. And yes. I mean you can even go, you can even go back to his tag team days where he faced Demolition. Yeah, the Hart Foundation and Demolition, that was fantastic. They had a great match against the Brainbusters. Great match against the Brainbusters. Faced Davey. Now granted he did get a little fuzzy here coming years. It was against Lawler in 93, so eh okay, whatever. 94 I personally do not like this match, but I know a lot of Bret Hart fans love this match, but it was Bret versus Owen in that cage. Yeah, I thought it was a great match. I uh, can't remember off the top of my head who he faced in 95. 95 is such a junk year for me. Um, 96, he was off, and then 97, he had that great match with Taker. Yeah. Sean was the special ref. So my question is, is Bret Hart Mr. SummerSlam? I would think so. Let's not also forget that he also came back and was at 2011 and he was part of that tag team match. Oh, that's like right. A, yeah. It was like John Chenna and his partners against the Nexus or something like that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. When Daniel Bryan came back. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, I would call him Mr. SummerSlam. Okay. Because we always say Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania. Well, Macho Man was first. Well, let's see. Macho Man was at two. He f- faced... Georgie Animal Steel. Okay, he faced George. Okay. So obviously, the classic matches versus Steamboat. WrestleMania 4, he won the belt. Five took on Hogan. Had a great match. Pulled a great match out of Hogan. Yes, he did. Uh, six was his tag match with Sherry, Dusty, and Sapphire. Eh, all right. Had a great match with Warrior at seven. Yeah, same like at five, pulling a match out of Hogan at seven. He pulled a match out of Warrior. Eight faced Flair. That was a pretty decent match. Nine, he was commentator. Ten, he faced Crush. And that's that. Okay, I could see how he was the original Mr. WrestleMania. I will go with you on that. Yeah, Mr. WrestleMania before they had coined Mr. Re- Mr. WrestleMania. Shawn Michaels absolutely deserves the title, but I would say maybe Macho Man is the grandfather of WrestleMania. Good point, good point. Okay. <laughs> All right. By the way, I love that new Macho. People have been posting that Macho WrestleMania figure. They've been posting those pictures up, and I kind of love that figure, man. Oh, the uh, the one from his match with Dusty? Yep. Yeah, I was thinking about picking up that set. I really want that Build-A-Figure Mean Gene. If I can make a recommendation. Yes, please. Just buy it off of eBay or Macari. Well, I mean, you do have the Hogan Elite in that series. You do have the Macho Man. But I've already got the perfect Dusty Rhodes figure. I can do without a Rock figure. So, yeah, I think you're right. All right, let's get into some wrestling figure message boards questions. All right, Crush. Oh, he wrote in from the grave. All right. Crush said, were the quote-unquote hope slash faith plaid tie era Hardy Boys ever seriously considered or close to being in a lineup? Good question. Is that a look that you would like to see visited if you regained access to them in the future? Steve said, it almost happened. Nothing actually worked on, but deep into discussion and consideration. Maybe things will come around again one day. That's a great call. I never really considered getting those figures. But man, what a good idea. I mean, we had every other iteration of the Hardy Boys, right? We just never got that one. So great call by that person. Really good question. So I will add that there is going to be quite a few questions about the Coliseum video figure. So be patient. There's quite a few questions in here, but I thought they were very informative. This comes in from Wu-Tang is for the children. (laughs) Wu-Tang. Wasn't that from Chappelle show? It was, yeah. (laughs) During the draft, yeah. Oh, God, that draft was so good. Anyways. Hi, Steve. With the upcoming release of the Hogan Funk 2-pack, will all of the Coliseum collection figures be released in two packs or just certain ones? Thank you for exploring different ways to get us some cool figures. Keep being great. Steve said the plan is for two packs for now, just like Jordan Casas said. Next question comes in from Styles Fan. He said, Hi, Steve. Will there be more Coliseum collections available than... No Holds Barred set. Also, what is the MSRP for that set? Thank you. No Holds Barred was not as limited as everyone claims. Those items sell out so quickly because of the incredible hype surrounding San Diego Comic-Con. While there is excitement leading in the Coliseum collection drop, it's nowhere near the level of San Diego Comic-Con. I'm hoping for a sale experience closer to retros, but time will sell. Price is roughly the same as No Holds Barred. They're going to sell out quick, dude. Oh, yeah, they are. They're not going to sit there for three or four or five days, however long it was the retros were up there a week. There's no way those things are going to last that long, dude. The excitement around these things, the hype surrounding them, everybody is excited for this set. Everybody that went nostalgic ham on the LJN and Hasbros during COVID time sees these things come out. They're like, we have to have at least two of those. So there's no way these things are going to last more than five minutes. There's absolutely no way. Agreed. Next question comes in from Tanay d 3 x All right. He said, are there enough heavy hitters available to you guys to carry the Coliseum collection line? With Hogan out of the way, it seems like what's left are Trunks Andre, Singlet Andre, Savage, Warrior, Piper, Heart Foundation, maybe Bruno, and the idea of Jesse Ventura. Is there a possibility of an elite scale version of the line for some of those less appreciated names? Steve said, well, as you just outlined, we can keep things going for quite a while. With the limited amount of drops per year, that's already years worth of releases. Boom. Realistically, 
I don't expect to be able to completely recreate the entire vintage line here, but when it's all said and done, I think we are all going to be very satisfied with our Coliseum collections. Yeah, uh, good question and great answer. Yeah, they can keep this thing going for quite a while. I like how he went in depth with throwing out uh, names from the original LJN line. Yeah, and a great call on Andre too. Like that totally makes sense that there could be a two pack because we did have both versions of Andre in that. Let me point out with the Andre, when they do the Trunks version of Andre, they can do his dumpster fire face with the the bushy (laughs) hair. And then they can do the short hair version because remember, didn't they do an Andre wig on one of his elites? Or not a wig, but like his hair piece? Yeah, they did. So there you go. That could be the accessory for that figure. So Trunks Andre could totally be interchangeable. I think that was like Elite 29 or something like that. Somewhere in that area. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. And then, of course, black singlet Andre. You just make it a cloth singlet. It's money. All day, baby. Yep. And put the uh, the super extended extra belt length heavyweight title with him, too. Oh, dude. The original, the Andre belt? Yes, the Andre belt. The super huge Andre belt. Yes, yes. All right. Last question comes in from Alpha Delta X-Ray. He said, will the Coliseum collection have the black card chase figures like Sergeant Slaughter did? Steve replied, no chases at the moment. Another excellent question. Yeah. So I pulled those questions. I hope that answers a lot of the questions regarding the Coliseum collection. I know the desire for these figures is there. Everybody is excited about this. November 11th is going to be, that is going to be a day. Yeah. I should take the day off. You should take the day off. Yeah. Just set my alarm and just have like three computers ready to go. All signed in, ready to go. Yes, you should. All right. I might have to make that so. I'm talking to my boss on Monday, damn it. (laughs) And that rounds out the news. It is time for WWE Elite Series 61. Are you ready, Scott? Can't wait. Before we get into WWE Elite Series 61, we want you guys to go over to Wrestling Figure Database, of course. Over there, you can find mostly every wrestling figure ever made. You can start scrolling through the large database, reason it's called Wrestling Figure Database, and you can go over there and start scrolling through all of the series. But Dylan gave me a tutorial. He says, first, hover over WWE. Then click Mainline Series 51 to 100 or wherever you are. Then use the Series drop-down. Just select your series. I didn't even know that there was a Series drop-down. That's my bad. I I accept full responsibility, Dylan. Scott did not tell me. And so, I actually, I changed my mind. Now I blame Scott. <laughs> it's all my fault. Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for issuing Dylan the apology. You're welcome. Then use the series drop down and just select your series. You should be fine with searching, but you'll get more accurate results and less noise that way. I didn't know about that. So thank you, Dylan, for sending that over. So head on over to Wrestling Figure Database and follow along as Scott reads off WWE Elite Series 61. Again, WrestlingFigureDatabase.com. All right, Scott. Are you ready for Elite Series 61? Yes, but before we get into it, I want to make sure that when you guys are on WrestlingFigureDatabase.com, you're smashing that donate button. Send Dylan Uh, some coin. Make sure that you keep that site free for all of us that are enjoying it. Send that man some money. Smash that donate button. He also said uh, this. He said, instead of kickbacks, I'm going to give you a kick. (laughs) It's a super kick, I hope. He said that to you, dude. He said that to you. You promote Aww. that don't. He said that you promote that donate button all the time, and he wants to kick you. See, What's he up wants with to that? Ki- kick you in the nose, squaw in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> South Park reference. All right, let's go into WWE Elite Series sixty one. Yes, sir. Mattel WWE Elite Series sixty one consisted of AJ Styles. He was in his black, white, and red gear. He came with a vest accessory that had an attachable or detachable hood. Next up, Big E, and he was in his gear to match Kofi and Xavier from the previous series, Elite Series 60. So he was in American gear, and he had a long coat accessory. Next up, Fandango. Fandango was in his blue pants. 
And he came with a fashion police cloth shirt, hat, and sunglasses accessories. Next up, of course, is tag team partner in the fashion police, Tyler Breeze, who also came with soft goods FP shirt. FP's not fully posable, unfortunately. It was fashion police. Mm-hmm. Tyler has blue pants with pink boot fringe. And, like Fandango, the cop hat, the sunglasses, and selfie stick. Next up, the one, the only, the best of all time, well, on some people's list anyway, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens was in his black and red KO gear and had the U.S. title accessory. And last and least, Shane McMahon. Shane was in his white Shane O'Mac jersey, black pants, and came packaged with an announce table and two monitor accessories. And that rounds out WWE Elite Series 61. So I know we might be kind of rehashing or something we talked about a few months ago, but Scott, why don't you go into what Tyler Breeze told us about the cop hat, the sunglasses, and and everything for the fashion police. Uh, He bought them off Amazon. Yes, there was more to that. Well, he looked up like stripper cop or something, didn't he? Yes, yes, there you go. He looked up stripper cop costume on Amazon and literally just got his and Fandango's outfits off Amazon. Which I find hilarious. <laughs> Stripper cop. <laughs> Stripper cop. Yeah. It's brilliant. Because that's when you look at the outfit, you're like, okay, that's totally stripper cop <laughs> with a selfie stick. Yeah. So anyways, that's what uh, Tyler Breeze told us. He said, and then he goes, the best part is, is then they make it into a figure. So this is great. Yeah. Then they made it into an action figure. So when you look at the fashion police, Elite Series 61, think stripper cops. <laughs> and we have these, uh, both of these signed, Jeff. We do, we do. Yeah, we got that signed at Stockton Con over the summer. So, uh, no legend in this series. No. No. Well, I mean, uh, Kevin Owens. Well, I mean, he's great. He's great. But, I mean, like, I don't know. This series just was okay. The AJ, I mean, the AJ looked good. Big E looked good. I love the fashion police stuff, especially with the Tyler story behind it. Right. Kevin Kevin Owens looked good. And, in fact, I, it was that was a newer face, I think, they were using at this time. Yeah, they changed it up a little bit. Yep. And then Shane McMahon looked good, but I don't know. Just nothing really jumped out, but it was good. It was, there wasn't anything to knock, but there wasn't anything to like completely rave about. I think the figure of the series for me anyway, is the Tyler Breeze. Yes. And it's, it's, it's good. It's a good series and KOs in it. So that's always a win. Yeah. You can't go wrong with that ever, ever. All right. Let's go over some eBay prices. AJ Styles with the attachable or detachable hood. Last sold eBay listing October 13th for $5.50. Ouch. Oh, man. That's not the bar, though. It is not. Still the Jack Gallagher line who is at $5. Got it. Oh, AJ came dangerously close. Dude, how funny would it be if it was the AJ Styles line? Oh, that would be so sad. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time, and it would be the AJ Styles line. Yeah, it should be like the James Ellsworth line. But yeah, God (laughs) forbid it became the AJ Styles line. That would be horrible. Big E is American Outfit. Last sold eBay listing. October 8th for $26 on seven bids. Fandango with the Fashion Police Cloth shirt. Last sold eBay listing. October 14th for $22.99 on one bid. Tyler Breeze, cop hat, sunglasses, selfie stick. Last sold eBay listing was September 1st for $25 on a buy it now. And I know that because of 130point.com. Kevin Owens, U.S. title. Last sold eBay listing was August 23rd for $20 on a buy it now. And Shane McMahon, announce table monitors. Last sold eBay listing October 18th. This was not mint on card. It was not loose complete. It was loose not complete for $16.97. So it was just the Shane O'Mac figure? Shane O'Mac figure. That was it. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So $16 for just one loose Shane O'Mac figure. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what the carded version would go for then. Great question. Hmm. I mean, there's not a lot of Shane McMahon figures out there. So you got to figure if somebody's looking to get a Shane to complete, it's a good Shane figure. Um, but man, 16 bucks loose. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Yep. So that rounds out WWE Elite Series 61. I think next week we're going to have some fun with a couple of figures in that series for Elite 60. Oh, you know it, Scott. Oh, I do. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that one. Absolutely. All right. We're going to play thumbs up, thumbs down in the next segment. Are you ready? Can't wait. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, we're going to play thumbs up, thumbs down. And what this is, is I am going to throw three old school toy lines at Scott. Now, Scott's going to put on his marketing hat, his CEO hat, and he's either going to give the thumbs up a green light to get this going, or he says, no, nope, keep it on the back burner. So Scott does not know what these three f- toy lines are. So I will start with the first one. Go for it. Monchichi. Um, hmm. Monchichi had its own cartoon. Yes. Monchichi, Monchichi. <laughs> <laughs> you all remember the song. You know you're singing it in your head right now. Well, once you said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's describe what Monchichi was. We didn't know if they were monkeys or if they were teddy bears. Yeah, I thought they were monkey teddy bears. Monkey teddy bears. Yes, that's what I viewed them as. They were just cute little monkey teddy bears, and they had cute little voices, and kids loved them. (laughs) Monchichi, Monchichi. (laughs) Monchichi, Monchichi. Yeah, you know you're singing the song. Go look it up on YouTube right now. It's great. Uh, They were quite popular, too, back in the 80s. Very popular, yeah. And I think, you know what? I think I would green light that one. Reason being is they were, yeah, adorably cute. And I think you bring that song in, you make it TikTok famous. You put the toy line behind it. I could see little kids really getting into that. But it would need a TikTok marketing drive behind it to get over with the youngsters. So I think, yes. I think Monchi, because something that's very, very cute, a catchy little song to go with it, you give it a drive on TikTok, I think that could be money. Okay. What did You You thought I was going to say no, huh? I thought you were going to give thumbs down on that one. No, dude. I think that could be money for, especially for like young, young kids. I'm thinking like the ages three or four to like eight or nine year old demographic. And even for some older ladies now that grew up with the Monchichis, they may even jump in. I really thought you were going thumbs down on that, but no, I'm going thumbs up, dude. I think with the right marketing campaign, that could be a win. All right. Next one. Smurfs. Hmm. Okay. So Smurfs have tried to, to kind of come back into the mainstream Right? They had some movies. I think they might have actually done some relaunch cartoons. But they never really caught on. Not with this generation. No. And that's the thing is maybe the unfamiliarity of the Monchi Cheese is what would make it big. You know, for young kids that never even knew about it. But it seems Uh like young kids are pretty familiar with the Smurfs. And they're still not over. So I'm going to go thumbs down. As much as I love the Smurfs. And believe me, I loved Gargamel, Azriel, the entire Smurf village. Loved all of them. But I got to give Smurfs a thumb down, dude. Okay. I kind of agree with you on that. I mean, as cool as the play sets would look, I think today it just wouldn't. I just don't think it would work today. Yeah, even if you went with the old Peo scale, right? The small, rubbery, like, non-movable yeah. Smurf figures. Yep. As great as those things were, I just... I, I don't see him getting over today because, like I said, it seems like they've tried and it hasn't really worked. Like, nobody's gone crazy for the Smurfs. So, I, I honestly, I think the Smurfs' time has come and gone. So, okay. thumbs down on the Smurfs. All right. Thumbs up, thumbs down on this last one. Voltron. Oh, Voltron is an absolute yes. Giant robots that transform. Yes, please. And what I'm thinking is my favorite Voltron toy of all time is the one that you got, Jeff, that I wish we still had. It was the five individual lions. Yep. And the figures went inside of it. And then you could transform the five lions into Voltron. I would love to see that again in whatever scale. Go three and three quarter inch, whatever you want. I think a great Voltron cartoon. I wouldn't say maybe, ah, no, I wouldn't go comic book. I would go cartoon for sure. And then relaunch the toy line. Yes, I'm going thumbs up on Voltron. Transforming robots, absolutely. Transformers are still big, right? People still love the the big robots from Japan. I'm thinking, yes, Voltron is a big thumbs up for me. I think Monchichis would actually make more money than Voltron. As surprising <laughs> do- as that sounds. I do I really think there's money in Monchichi. Monchichi, Monchichi. <laughs> God damn it, stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's money in that line, dude. I really do. I think it would do better than Voltron, but I'm going to give two of your three a big thumbs up. Okay. All right. So that is thumbs up, thumbs down. I really thought you were going to give two thumbs down, Monchichi and Smurfs, and then the thumbs up on Voltron. But like you said, 
that Voltron playset where you connected all of them together. Yes. You've got to bring that back. Yeah, where you absolutely. Can, oh, God, that toy was so beautiful back in the 80s. Oh, absolutely. And you bring that back, you're going to hit a lot of nostalgic feels. I mean, people still already love Voltron. So you're not hard pressed to find a new fan base for it. It's already there. But you really want to pull in that younger generation that may not have the familiarity with it. But I think you launch a new cartoon for it. And I think they did that on Netflix not too long ago. I think they did have a new Voltron cartoon. But they didn't release any toys, right? But there were no toys. That's correct. I think what they did like a Lego or something. Yeah, there was. Oh, They did the Lego. And then there was one other. Oh, Super 7 did an ultimate. There you go. Yeah, Super 7 did an ultimate. And you know what? Super 7 already does the reaction style figures. If they could do one of those Voltron builds with the figures that go inside the Lions, I think that would be awesome. I'd love to see Super 7 get in on that one. I mean, you're talking big price point because Super 7's not cheap. But look, if you want a badass looking Voltron, I'd want Super 7 making it. All right. That is thumbs up, thumbs down for this week. We want to round out the show of course we want you guys to go check out wrestlingtoytracker.com over there they do the three month average for carded and loose prices of ljn's gloobs just toys bendums defining moments retros hasbros uh i think i got everything i think you covered it wrestling okay. buddies no no wrestling buddies. no that, no 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 not yet not yet okay. hopefully soon hopefully soon but anyways head on over to wrestling toy tracker make sure you're getting the fair market value again wrestling toy tracker.com all right let's head on over to the podcasting buddies real real quick we got breaker and bane they do a fun retro show with nostalgia talk wrestling talk a bunch of other talk movie talk comic talk they got it all over there at breaker and bane's power hour and of course check out breaker's side project you know it's fake right and the t b toy cast eric and steve we're back again this week on the positively pro wrestling podcast with a new show go check it out all these can be found on itunes as well and you same where you get this show seth sheena and marco do the chick foley show they talk wrestling talk wrestling figures justin does wrestling cheers we got rj with ringside rant marty and rucker do boot to the face Tim is pulling up a chair with the Fig Life community. Soda and Ethan are talking about NASCAR and the Marbles pod. Again, find all these on iTunes. And Scott, what you got for Drunk Wrestling History? Yes, give us a follow on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Drunk. The show that dropped this past Friday was about spooky and scary Halloween gimmicks. Or just scary gimmicks altogether in wrestling. We cover a whole bunch of them. Eddie throws out a few. Adam throws out a few. I throw out a few. We talk about them. We laugh about them scary or spooky wrestling gimmicks because we're drunk wrestling history we're not always accurate but we are always drunk and jeff next Uh friday yes our annual roast drops (gasps) oh boy yep our roast subject is the miz eddie put a lot of work into the editing i listened to about half of it it's fantastic definitely go check it out i think you guys will enjoy it that's next friday or this coming friday On The Miz, huh? On The Miz, yes. All right. That is Drunk Wrestling History. And also check out our buddies, Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. Scott, what you got for Roll Call? Well, I normally started out with Jason Wolf, but this week I'm going to start it out with Outsiders Beard Co. Jeff Bain is taking a hiatus from Outsiders Beard Co. So let's all hope and pray he comes back very, very soon with all of his amazing beard products that keep our beard hairs from smelling like our butt hairs all the best to bane we hope to see outsidersbeardco.com back very very soon but of course jason wolf is the guy we're going to talk about if you need artwork jason is your guy he does all types of artwork he does custom hasbro figures check out his stuff you will not be disappointed across all of his social media platforms the art of jason wolf check him out Hit him up, get some artwork. You won't be disappointed. He's our artist. He should be yours too. And Jeff, that rounds out roll call. He also does great work with ring skirts. He has been pumping out some beautiful, beautiful figures. Yeah, no, he he's incredible. I mean, just go look at his stuff. It, it speaks for itself. The dude is awesome. All right, Scott, for episode 353, anything else? Well, we started off the show talking about GBM's birthday. So I wanted to bookend our show 
with the pillars of the Fig Life community. You got GBM on the East Coast. And over here, I want to throw out a happy birthday to our boy Tim from the Pulling Up a Chair podcast. Happy birthday, Tim. I hope it was fantastic. Big happy birthday to you, Mike. Thank you guys for being the East Coast and West Coast pillars of the Fig Life community. Just tremendous guys. I hope you guys had a great birthday. And with that said, Jeff, stay safe, stay healthy, Fig Life since 2016, and happy toy hunting. And I want to thank everybody for listening to episode 353 and happy birthday to him. Hashtag Fig Life. Adios. Let's go. Jeff and Scott, the Tomb Brothers, busting out the ring. But we don't take it out the box, MOC. Happy toy hunting, we'll see you next week. With the OGs of WFP. Fully posable, thank you all for listening. It ain't no storyline, real life siblings. So everybody go and do your toy spotting. Hashtag Fig Life, adios from the Kings.